In the last video, we rendered the normals as this big, nice death trap. And in this video, I want to show you a different way of rendering the normals, and that is treating the normals as a color. Normals are vectors of three, and colors are vectors of three as well. It takes RGB to make a color. It takes XYZ to make a vector. We can treat colors like vectors. In fact, instead of using the vertex color for a vertex, let's use the normal as the color for that vertex. So that's what we're going to do. But first of all, I'm going to go back in my code and get rid of all the extra ghibli gop I copied and pasted in there to get all these pointy normals in there so don't blink there we go the normals are now gone and all their hideous code that I copied and pasted to make that happen is now gone let's render the normals as a color recall back in this vertex data structure we added the normal which is a vec 3 so the normal adds another three floats to our vertex we have one two three four five six seven eight nine floats per vertex something I felt to mention is in our num floats per vertice I changed this to a nine instead of a six that affects our attrib calls we say GL vertex attrib pointer the stride is now larger the vertex byte size increased by three floats recall that these attribs attrib zero is position attrib one is color position color and we're not forced to say zero one here because that's the order that they're in Right here, what in the tarnation is that pin for? Okay, we're not we're not forced to to say this is attribute one. I could say it's attribute ten. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I just tend to go in that order: zero, one, two. Uh, I guess this is attribute zero. Anyway, uh, we enable vertex attribute a zero. Enable position to be streamed in. Otherwise, we saw that comes in as a static constant, much like a uniform. We saw that in previous videos. Enable the color. By the way, the position is three floats. The color is three floats. Here's the stride, and then this is where the data starts. So we need to do the exact same thing with our normal information now. So let's go here, Control L, Control V, V, and we'll enable attribute two. I'm going to Control, well, actually, I'll type this one out. Why not? GL vertex attrib pointer. For attribute two, it's also three floats. Please don't normalize my data for me. I already normalized it anyway. The stride is the same as the stride always is. It's nine times the size of float. And then the data for normal starts at size of float times six. Okay, go back in back to this vertex data structure. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six floats. After we get past these floats, the data for the normal starts right there. So 6 times the size of float. I'm going to copy this line. I know it's kind of a pain in the neck, but we have to enable that for all of our geometries, all of our vertex array objects. We talked about vertex array objects in a previous video. So we have 0, 1, and 2. And then let me just grab this line here, vertex a trip pointer copy this paste it down here but now it's going to be arrow off arrow byte offset remember we packed all of our data into one buffer so the arrow starts there for attribute 2 after the arrow starts the i guess after the teapot starts the arrow that's what we're doing there and then let me go back copy this and paste this down here, but now it's going to be plain byte offset. And I think we're good to go. Let's go to our shader code. Uh, we need to allow that streaming data to come in here. So in, you have a hard time. Every time I type in, I throw a T on the end of it. That's how you know if you're a true programmer or not. You can't type in without slapping a T at the end. In layout, location gets two. This is attribute two. This two corresponds with this two right here and this two right here hopefully that's review it's a vec three and I'll call it normal and then instead of using the vertex color for the color of this vertex I'm actually going to render the normal I'll say hey take that normal I know that's a geometric normal but let's let's use that as the color of my vertex so here's a good point to pause the video and think what's gonna happen when Jamie hits control F5 what's gonna change how's the scene gonna look any different. Pause the video, think about that before I hit Control F5. Okay, Control F5, build this, run this, and our scene is epic. That actually looks <laughs> pretty decent. Notice the plane is all green, the top of our arrow is all green, the uh, teapots are looking gorgeous. Look at that. That's, I wish I could 
color like that. But anyway, did, can you figure out why the colors are the way they are? Okay, if you think of vectors as colors, hopefully that that should make sense. Why why we're seeing what we're seeing? Let's look at the plane for example. We know that all the normals for the plane stick straight up. We saw that in the last video. And straight up would be y. Okay, that would be the y direction. Let me, does white look good on Yeah, okay, we'll do white. So a color is R, red, green, blue. And a vector is x, y, z. And we know that the plane has all y. It's all 1 right there. It's 1 in the y, 0 in the x, 0 in the z. So the plane's going to be all green. All the vertices for the plane are all green. Well, look at the top of the arrow. It has the same, same thing going on. All of these normals were pointed straight up, and that's all y. And so the top of the arrow is now green. Now, can you look at all the rest of the colors in this scene and tell me why the colors are the way they are? For example, the teapot. The teapot. Didn't we just see in the last video that the teapot normals are pointed up, mostly up, depending on or the top of the teapot? The top of the teapot. We had the cone of death there. Do you remember? So why are the? Why is this not all green? Why is this not all green? Pause the video and and think about it. When we originally did the teapot and we brought the teapot into the scene, don't you remember the teapot naturally sits on its side? Yeah, we had to rotate the teapot to make it look the way it looks. Let's go back to our transforms. Here's our paint GL, and I believe the teapot we said rotate negative 90. Let's say rotate 0. Rotate 0. Both teapots will rotate them 0 and have the teapots lay on their natural side. And then hopefully this makes more sense. Yeah, is that you, you see that the top of the sides of those teapots is green-ish because the normals are mostly pointing up. I mean, right here we have a normal pretty much straight up, very green right there. But as we get out here, the normals point more and more this way and become more red. Okay, what does the what does the red mean? We got red on this side too of the handle. You see the red over there? Normals pointing that way. Let's see, red, green, blue. X, Y, Z. The more reddish something is, the more X-ish that normal is. Take a look at the arrow over here, the side of this arrow. That's very red. Very red, very red. Extremely red. Let's go look at this other side of the arrow. On this side, oh, it's black. Very black. Why would this side of the arrow be black? We know that the normals are coming out this direction. Why would this side the arrow will be black. Well, because that's a negative x value. And negative values in light, light goes from 0 to 1. Color brightness goes from 0 to 1. Anything in the negative is black. So that's why the side of the arrow there is black. And then, anyway, I don't know if there's anything else that's interesting. It looks like the top of the teapot. You see the teapot handle there? Maybe the normals right there pointed the wrong direction. Something might be messed up with our normals there in the tippity top and then of course we can't see the inside of the teapot because we turned on the back face cooling but then look this is very dark here the more darkish that's negative okay but that's not negative x what is that that's negative blue okay the the normals on this side oh let me get the let me fly the camera into a spot that makes sense here so the normals, oh, that's slow. That's slow. Sorry, that's so slow. The normals here are pointed that direction, pointed that direction. So that's blue. So red, green, blue, X, Y, Z. The normals on the top here are very Z-ish. Okay? The normals on the bottom are pointed that direction. They're very negative Z-ish. And any negative value will render as black. And so that's why the bottom of the teapot there is dark. Anyway, kind of fun to render these normals uh, as colors. The colors and the normals, they're just three component vectors, and so have a heyday with that. We can have even more fun with this in the shader. We can say, hey, instead of rendering the color as the normal, let's let's use the position. Let's use the position of that vector as the color. Control F5, build that, run that, and you can see we get very interesting effects. We can see the position the XYZ, like, that is really neat, actually. That is, 
That is really neat. We're seeing the position of the vertices rendered as a color. And so we have, let's do X, Y, Z, R, G, B. So the more B something is, the more Z it is, the more R something is, the more X it is. Then you can see the mix of red and blue here making our purple. And then here's a very negative area on the plane. It's black. And so we get negatives there. And then the teapots and the arrow. You can see now the, the colors are interesting there. We're rendering the position of the vertex as a color. Right? This position is in model space. It's not the projected position. This is model position. That's why when we look at this, we're seeing the colors in their respective model coordinate system. Let me bring this out. The model coordinate system for the uh, plane is right here. And then for the arrow, it's right here. And the teapots will be roughly right in the middle. And so the color of the vertices are based off those RGB locations in the model position. Anyway, I'm obviously dragging on. But I think it's kind of fun to play with this. I encourage you to play with that by tweaking what colors render out depending on what vertex attributes come in. In fact, just for tickles, I have no idea what this is going to do. But we're, we'll take the projected position and we'll render that as a color. That's going to be kind of interesting but we have to uh, do this constructor call it's like a conversion i'm going to take the gl position and just render that as the color and now look at that we have some consistency in our scene and what's even cooler is no matter where i turn the camera you can see the rgb the colors are are consistent because we're talking about projected space and projected space is always the same on our screen we talked about uh, taking a 3D scene and smashing it to a two-dimensional coordinate system. Here's our two-dimensional coordinate system. That is terrible. Let me try that again. Here is our vertical, vertical axis. There's our horizontal axis. And you can see no matter how I move the camera, those axes hold true. And we can kind of see our shapes out there. But anyway, I encourage you to pause or <laughs> I'm going to end the video here but think about why that is and how projected position relates to XYZ and if you recall back in the videos earlier where I was showing you model view projection matrices and why this is then, then hopefully it should make sense